So continuing with um, significant figures and how to deal with them in a calculation, we went over, over how to do multiplication and division. And now we need to look at addition and subtraction. The rules for treating significant figures with addition and subtraction are different. Okay? So here's it out in words. In addition or subtraction, the result carries the same number of decimal places as the quantity carrying the fewest decimal places. So let's look at that, and what exactly does that mean? Let's look at this example. 5.74, 0 0.823, 2.651. We're going to add those numbers together. So we learned that all measurements have uncertainty. Where is the uncertain digit in a measurement? It's the last digit. The last digit is always uncertain. So in this example, 5.74, which digit is uncertain? The 4. So that one's uncertain. In 0.823, it's the 3. And in 2.651, it's the 1. Those digits are uncertain. So let's think about adding these numbers. The best thing is to actually do it on your calculator first. Still haven't gotten my calculator back from my child, so I have to use my cell phone. 5.74 plus 0.823 plus 2.651. Yes, we could do this the old-fashioned way, but we have a calculator, so uh, the calculator says this. But then, for significant figures, we need to look at where did those digits come from? So when we add a 3 that was an estimate and a 1 that was an estimate together, we get 4, but is that a certain digit or an uncertain digit? That's an uncertain digit. So I'm going to underline that just like I underlined the other ones, underlined it underlined. Okay, let's look at the next column over. Um, this 4, the 4 is uncertain. We're adding that to a 2 that we're sure about. There's no uncertainty in the 2. There's no uncertainty in the 5. We come up with 11, but is that 1 certain or uncertain? It's uncertain because there was an uncertain number included in how we got that. So this 1 is going to be uncertain. Let's look at the next column. 7, that's a certain digit. 8, a certain digit. 6, a certain digit. So the, the total of those, is there any uncertainty in that? No. So the 2 is a certain digit. In, in our numbers that we record, we want one uncertain digit. So what are we going to keep? We're going to keep all the certain digits, the 9 and the 2. We're going to keep the first uncertain digit. So the correct way to record this answer is 9.21. We keep one uncertain digit. We don't want to keep the 4 because the 4 is actually very, very uncertain. If there's uncertainty in the hundredths place, then the thousandths place, we really have no information about that. Why do we care about this? Well, we want our, our results of our calculations to reflect the precision with which the measurements were made. Okay, we don't want to tell people that we know it so very precisely when one of those numbers was just a wild guess, perhaps. Yes, question? We use the 4 to round the 1, or do we just drop it completely, whether it's a 4 or a 9 or an 8? Good question. So we're keeping the 1. We do have to look at the 4. We do have to look at the 4 to decide whether we round up or we round down. And I think that just became so automatic for me that I completely overlooked that. But we look at the 4. We look at the next digit, the first one that we're getting rid of. And we ask ourselves, is that less than 5? Yeah, okay, then we're going to round down. If it's five or greater, we round up. Okay? Any questions about that one? So how does that fall into the rule? 
Well, how many decimal places does the first number have? This one. What are decimal places? Decimal places are the, are the digits after the decimal point. This one has two, this one has three, this one has three. That's not the same as counting significant figures, counting decimal places. So the fewest number of decimal places is two. What did our answer end up with? Two decimal places. So that's how the rule works. As you're getting used to the rule and understanding it, I think it's helpful to stack them up this way and look at how that uncertainty carries down into your answer. Let's do this one, 4.8 minus 3.965. Again, you know, this is not math class. Be feel free to use your calculator. 3.965. So my calculator says 0 0.835. So let's try using the rule, and then we'll look at the stacked subtraction. The rule says fewest number of decimal places. How many decimal places in the first number? One. How many in the second? Three. Three. So that tells us our answer should only have one decimal place. That means we should round it off to this place and call it 0 0.8. The next digit is a 3. That's less than 5. We round down. 0.835 is closer to 0.8 than to 0.9. So let's look at um, what we did with the first one. In 4.8, the uncertain digit is the last one. In 3.965, the uncertain digit is the last one. So as we go down this column, if there's uncertainty in any of those digits, then there's uncertainty in the digit at the bottom. There's uncertainty there. What about this next column? There's not an underlying digit there. What's the digit in the first number? What's up here? We have no idea. The, the 8 is an estimation. We have no clue what the next one is. So is there uncertainty in that column? Yeah, there's plenty of uncertainty. There's uncertainty there, and there's uncertainty here. We're going to keep that guy because we keep one uncertain digit. Okay? Is this making sense? It isn't some random thing we made up to trick students. Sometimes it may appear that way. If you understand how it works, remembering the rules is much, much easier. So let's do some more examples. Perform the calculations to the correct number of significant figures. So let's do that on the calculator first and write down what the calculator says. So I'm getting 7.588. Anybody else get that? Yeah? Okay. Always a good idea to do your calculations twice because it's so easy to make mistakes. So I do it, and then I'll ask for if anybody else got the same number, and then we're probably good. That's what the calculator says. So you could stack these up, and if, if that works for you, especially at the beginning, by all means do it. But let's just try to apply the rule. This is adding and subtracting, so we're going to look at the number of decimal places. Not the number of significant figures, but the number of decimal places. So this first, first number has two decimal places, the next one has three, and the next one has four, oops, and the last one has one. So how many decimal places should our <laughs> final answer have? One. one. So that means we're going to keep the first decimal place, and we're going to get rid of everything else. 
So I see, okay, I've got a 5. The next digit is 8. I'm going to round up and I'm going to record my answer as 7.6. Again, I think it's best to write down the whole thing that your calculator shows you and then round it according to the rules for significant figures. Any questions? The easiest and best way to learn in this class is to understand it during lecture. If you're not sure how this is working, please ask a question. Even if you can't formulate the question. Remember my, my oldest son who wants to be a college chemistry teacher, strangely, strangely enough. He was sitting in his calculus class and the lesson was a little bit hard and the teacher said, does anybody have any questions? And he thought to himself, that's not the best thing to ask because he said, I have a lot of questions, but I'm, I'm feeling so lost today that I can't even formulate a question. He said, when I'm a teacher, I'm going to ask, does anyone have any questions? You don't actually have to be able to put them into words, but is anyone confused about this? Okay, so you don't actually have to be able to formulate a question. If you don't understand, you can just raise your hand and say, I don't understand that. Could you explain it again? Chances are good somebody else is feeling that way too. Okay. If I don't get questions, I assume that it's all clear to everyone and I'm just going to march on. Any questions? Okay, let's do the next one. So again, find the answer using your calculator. My calculator says 131.108. Anybody else? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that's what the calculator says. Your calculator does not understand error, uncertainty, significant figures, any of that. So we have to round this number accordingly. How many decimal places should we round it to? Two. two. Because the first number has three decimal places, the second one has two, the third one has three. We're going to go with the smallest, so we're going to round it to two. So this should be 131.11. We're going to keep the second decimal place. The next digit is eight. We round up. So this is our rounded number. Any questions? You have to remember the rules for adding and subtracting are different than the rules for multiplying and dividing. So what do you do when you have both of these things mixed together? This is not going to happen a lot in this class, but it will happen some. So you have to be careful of order of operations. So if there are parentheses, do the steps in the parentheses. Um, determine the number of significant figures that those individual intermediate answers should have, but do not round them. Because if you round them before you're finished, you'll introduce error. So figure out how many sig figs that answer should have, do the remaining steps, and then round the final answer considering the significant figures from the intermediate answer and any other um, numbers that were involved. So let's do something like this. We got 3.897 times the quantity 782.3 minus 451.88. So in parentheses, we have subtraction. And we look at these numbers, and this one has one decimal place, and this one has two decimal places. So we can know by looking at this that the rounded answer would have one decimal place. But that doesn't necessarily tell us how many significant figures there are. So we need to actually do that, 782.3 minus 451.88. I'm going to write down what that number is. That is 330.42.
Now we decided already that that should have one decimal place. So we're going to keep the first decimal place. So then how many significant figures are in that number? Four. The three, the three, the zero, and the four. We're going to let the two come along for the ride, but it's not counted as a significant figure. So then we look at that and we say, okay, this guy has four sig figs. That number is in my calculator, and now I'm going to multiply by the 3.897, so times 3.897 equals, and I'm going to write down the whole big mess that my calculator gives me. And it is a mess this time. 1287.64678. Anybody else get that? Yeah. Okay. So there's what the calculator says is the answer. We looked at the subtraction separately and determined that the, the answer to that has four significant figures. How many sig figs does this one have? That one also has four. So now we're looking at this multiplication. We're multiplying the 3.897 times this number which even though it shows five digits, it's got four sig figs. The answer is this, but how many sig figs should it have? Four. Because each of the things that we were multiplying had four. So we're going to keep one, two, eight, seven. We're going to keep up to here, and we're going to drop the six. Six is five or greater. That rounds up. We get 1288. Any questions? So for the ones we were doing before, like the addition and subtraction, that was just to find the uncertain number? Yeah, for writing this down, mm -hmm. we did that and wrote down the answer just to figure out how many significant figures are there. Okay. Yep. You, you know, if you're just finding this answer, no, you wouldn't technically have to write that down. But sometimes when you subtract or add, you end up with a lot more significant figures or a lot fewer significant figures than either of the numbers you started with. And so you can't just really eyeball it. Any question over here? Yeah. In this case, we have four significant figures. Let's say we had two significant figures and we got that answer. How would we write it down? Would we just write down? That's a good question. Question is, this one we have four significant figures, but what if it was two? How would we round this number? I think I've got a slide coming up on that, but let's just talk about it right now. So, 1287.64674. We're just saying if. If we needed to round it here. Can we round that to 13? Okay, so I'm going to hire you to do some work around my house. You know, part of my fence needs rebuilding. So I'll pay you $1,287 to do the job. We're just going to round it off to ballpark, and I'll give you $13. Good? You come to my house tomorrow? No, that's not good, is it? Why? 13 and 12087 are not even close. So yeah, we want to keep two digits, but then what do we do? We could add zeros and round it to 1,300. The best thing and what I want you to do is when you see this problem where you're going to be losing digits to the left of the decimal place, the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place, put the number in scientific notation first and then round it because you will never encounter that problem doing that that way. So in scientific notation, which we learned on Tuesday, this would be one, two, eight, seven, six. I'm going to drop all those guys, so I'll just leave those off for now. Times ten to the what? Ten to the third. Because I move the decimal place to after the one, so it's one, two, three places. 1,287 is a large number. It's bigger than one, so the exponent's positive. Now I look at this number and say I need to keep two significant figures. I round this to 1.3 times 10 to the third. No problems. Okay? And that does come up. 
And the common mistake is students will round it to 13. Like, well, you've got the right number of significant figures, but the answer is wrong. So that's, that's something to watch out for. So I'm going to get rid of that and make space for the next one. Let's do the next one. Here we've got 4.58 divided by 1.239, and then we're going to subtract 0.578. So we need to look at what's in the parentheses, uh, 4.58 divided by 1.239. Okay, I'm going to write down that intermediate value. I'm going to leave it in my calculator, but I'm just going to write it down. It's got a lot of digits. Let's see if I copied that right. 6965. Two nine four six, and then from that we're going to subtract 0.58, so minus sorry 0.578 minus 0.578. So the calculator answer is 3.1185246. Somebody else get that answer? Yes. yes? Okay, great. So now let's, let's look at what we're doing here. We've got division over here, and then that product is being um, involved with subtraction. So to determine the subtraction thing, we have to know how many decimal places does this number have. Well, we figure that out by finding out the number of significant figures. 4.58 has three significant figures. This one has four. So if we were stopping here, we would round it to three significant figures. So we would call that, we would keep the three, the six, and the nine, and we'd be dropping the six. We're not going to actually round it, though. We're just going to, to note where we would round it. So it would have two decimal places. So then that's where, what we're going to consider when we look at the subtraction. This guy has two decimal places. This guy has three. So our answer should have two decimal places. So 3.11. We're going to keep this second place. We have a lot of eights today in the dropped digit. The eight rounds it up to 3.12. Any questions? This isn't, um, as one of my kids said, this isn't rocket surgery, um, but it's tricky, okay? There's, there's a pattern in details that you have to remember. You're all capable of learning how to do this. It's going to take some practice, though, okay? So don't just give up because it doesn't make sense initially. It's just something new. Okay, I personally, I don't like new things. I don't like change unless it's my idea, right? So uh, it, it's just something new, and you just have to work with it until it's not new, and it, it becomes kind of second nature. Let's see what's coming up next here.